Good afternoon. Well, we're going to go ahead and try another pot roast today. Uh, the first one that I did on the Rec Tech, uh, I, in my opinion, it was just too dry. I think I overcooked I mean, I don't think I overcooked it, but I think I, I left it out of the pan too long, uh, in my opinion. And then I did another one that I made a video for, and I didn't, I didn't really like it, so I didn't post the video. But today, uh, we're going to do it a bit different. We're actually going to do this on a pit barrel. Uh, I got this idea from... Uh, Another YouTube channel, I think it's called How to BBQ Right. It's at, uh, from Malcolm Reed. Uh, and I'm going to do it just like he did. He did his on his ugly drum smoker. I'm going to do mine on my pit barrel. I'm um, expecting this is going to take anywhere in between four and five hours. And uh, I'm going to try to maintain the barrel temp at 250. So uh, I'll pick back up and I'll show you how I'm going to get the meat ready. Check you later. All right, back. Uh, we're getting the, the truck roast ready. Uh, so first things first, just a little bit of olive oil. A little bit of olive oil goes quite a bit. Oh, that might be a bit much. Oh my. Oh my. That'll work. I'm probably going to take this piece of paper towel I had. Maybe just dab a little of that off. Not that it really matters, but to me, I put it on a bit heavy. So, uh, then seasoning today, the first coat, uh, we're going to put on this uh, Fat Boy steak rub. So it's really good. So I'm just going to be generous with this. Like usual, I'm usually pretty generous with my seasonings. But that should be about good. I'm just going to kind of slap it in and then I'm also going to use this deer steak seasoning and this deer steak seasoning to me it, it smells like a prime rib rub so I'm kind of doing this up how I would do it with prime rib so a little bit of this stuff goes quite a long ways in my opinion so that should be good again I'm just going to go ahead and push it into the meat then I'm going to use some uh, just some store bought uh, rosemary leaves not fresh by any means I said I usually do rosemary leaves on my, on my prime rib so I'm gonna do it on here, see how it turns out. I'm also gonna use just about that much um, chopped garlic. I'm just gonna kind of spread it out on there. And uh, yeah, just see what that does to her. So I'm gonna let this sit out and uh, probably let it sit out for about half hour, 45 minutes, and I'll pick back up with them at the pit barrel. See you in a little bit. All right, uh, I've had charcoal going now for probably about a half hour with the grill grate on it. And uh, got about two chunks of hickory in it. Uh, it's maintaining right at about 260, 258-ish. You know, that's going to be good enough for me. So what I'm going to do, I should probably wear a glove for this. I did. I'm just going to go ahead, we'll take the truck roast. I'm just going to plop it right on. And I'm going to let that cook on each side for a half hour. So I will come back out here in uh, a half hour and I'll show you what it looks like when I flip it. So... Uh, we'll see you in, well, see you in 30 minutes. Okay, it has been a half hour. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to flip the roast over. Uh, I'm just going to use my hands. Oh, nice. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is, uh, like I said, the first hour I'm going to cook it like this, just so this gets some nice smoke in it. Not really going for a sear. Um, cooking too low and I'm just too far away from the meat to get a sear. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rebar back in, uh, the cover back on, and I'm going to let it go for another half an hour. And uh, I will pick back up in the kitchen. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. See you in a little bit. All right. It has been one hour. Uh, so I pulled it off. I'm putting it in the pan. I'm going to go ahead and take one full can of beef broth. Pour it all in there. And then I'm going to take... I'm just going to fill a can back up and take half a can of this, just beef stock. Da, 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 da. Like I said, about a half a can. Oh, I'm going to drop this bottle. There we go, some beef stock. And then I'm going to fill the can up all the way with water. Do a can of water. Now what I'm going to do? Actually, that's probably going to be the full, full thing. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tin foil, and cover this up tight with some tin foil, then I'm going to throw it back onto the pit barrel for another hour. So I'll pick back up after this has been done pit barrel for another hour, and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. All right. Well, the beef's not done, but I just figured I'd show you. Uh, I got a big mixing bowl or a big bowl. Uh, quartered up about eight or nine, quartered up about eight or nine small potatoes, 
a uh, small bag of baby carrots, and then like a medium to large size onion. Uh, threw it all in a bowl. I wasn't going to season it, and I was like, oh, it might be good. And I see my dad did like a Bloody Mary thing last week, and so I was like, oh, give us a try just on the veggies. So I used probably about a quarter cup of this Zing Zang Bloody Mary mix. Uh, this Zing Zang is awesome. Um, I had it this morning in a couple Bloody Marys, and I've tried other mixes, and Zing Zang is my favorite. So, And then also to that, I added some of the Big Dick's Margarita Rub. So I just figured I'd show you this, and uh, I will pick back up, obviously, once I got the beef in here, and I'll show you how I put everything together. See you in a little bit. Alrighty, we're back. She's been on for another hour. So let's just go ahead and unwrap this and see what we got. It's gonna pretty much look the same as before. Oh my. Oh my, does that smell good. So, what we're gonna do now is obviously we're gonna take the veggies and we're just gonna plop them in there. I might have to drain a little bit of this liquid out to be honest with you because I think that uh, there's just gonna be too much liquid in there, so when I put the veggies on, I think it's gonna spill over the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spill some of it out real quick. That should be good. All right, now on to the veggies. Let's go ahead and take them. No rhyme or reason how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna, oh shoot, that was hot. Well, whatever. We're cooking, it's all right. It's all right. Get some of it in the water, beef broth. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue putting all the veggies in and then what I'm going to do again is I'm going to rewrap it and actually I'm going to do two sheets of tin foil this time and uh, I'm going to put it back on the PVC which has been maintaining right at about 250 like on the dot the whole cook. It's been it's been a pretty good cook. Excuse me while I wash my hands. It's been a really good cook. Uh, it's been pretty easy. I've had to tin foil some of the holes up a little bit. Um, that's pretty normal when I'm trying to run into that. Like when I'm trying to run a pit barrel that low, usually my pit barrel runs 270, 280. So I'm not going to show you the rest of this, but I'm going to actually I'll just show you the first sheet. I'm just going to really get it tight, um, really cover it up tight. I'm going to do another load or another sheet after this, and I'm going to throw it back in a pit barrel cooker for another two hours, and that should give these veggies plenty of time to cook uh, per the video that I watched. So I will pick back up in a couple hours, and I will uh, show you the finished product. We'll see you later. Alrighty, we're back. Um, total cook time was right at about, eh, it was like four hours and five minutes. Remember the, cut the pit bar out 250 the whole time. Uh, threw the, the roast on, 30 minutes on each side, pulled it out, put it in the pan, put in the mixings I said I did before, covered it back up for an hour, then put all the veggies in, then covered it up and cooked it for two more hours. So we will see what we got here for a finished product. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. That's good. Oh, my. Oh, my. You can't see the beef. We'll see if I can get to it with a fork here. Let me grab a fork. See if we can get to it. Might be kind of difficult. Oh, man. It's just... <laughs> oh, yes. It's just tearing right apart, and that's what I want. Uh, I don't know. That's hot. Let's put it on a fork. I don't know if you can see it. That looks like nice, nice beef. That's a nice, uh, kind of sort of a crock pot, but not, not, I mean, nowhere near a crock pot because, well, I smoked it. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool off for about 20 minutes and I'll pick back up once I got it all plated up. We'll see you in a little bit. Ooh, wee! Look at the steam coming off of that. No, uh, it's still pretty hot. Uh, I just transferred all the veggies on the bottom, put the the roast on top, and I just got to show you guys how easy this cuts apart. Just, I mean, pretty much like butter. I can just use my fork, dig right in, then I got a good piece of meat. So I'm still going to let this sit here for about, oh, another five minutes let it cool off. And uh, I'll give you one more look once it's all plated up. It might just be a picture, it might be a video. I don't know. We'll see in a little bit. Alrighty, well, we got it all put it up, ready for dinner. Uh, you can see the, the veggies are still in there. Oh, maybe a little piece of meat. Let's go ahead and add that into my dinner. Uh, you can see what a nice, I mean, <clears throat> this roast just pulled apart like butter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use some of the, uh, the juice from earlier. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna pour a little bit on there. That's about good. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna eat. So I hope you guys like this video. Um, you know, maybe subscribe. 
maybe tell your friends and have them subscribe and I can get some more subscribers. So uh, I will catch you guys on a flippity flop. I'm going to eat because I'm hungry. So uh, stay classy.